with Celebrate Truth. We've got a good one for you tonight. This one you're going to love. It's from Forbes magazine and it is crazy. It's how to talk to a flat earther. You guys are going to absolutely love this. It's absolutely hilarious. But hey, let's get into it and uh, let's go. All right, so here we go. This is Forbes magazine. You're actually going to actually hear from me how ridiculous this article is. Now, can you imagine Forbes magazine putting out an article explaining how do you talk to a flat earther? If you encounter a flat earther, what do you say? Hmm, are we gonna get some good advice? Are we gonna get some nonsense? Well, you're gonna absolutely be blown away with this garbage. This is from Forbes magazine, dated, uh, this was December the 10th, 2018, by Paul Sutter, all right? I won't presume to know your family or your friend group, but I'm willing to bet there's a decent chance that at least one person you know doesn't believe the earth is curved. Instead, they argue with either a mountain of plausible sounding statements or just vague deflections about government secrets and conspiracies that the earth is flat. That orbits are our illusion that astronomy is a lie, that the truth is hidden. What are you to do with your science-loving heart and evidence-based thinking? <laughs> Love how they say your science-loving heart and your evidence-based thinking, like we don't have evidence on our side. The natural thing, of course, is to argue, to lay it out, the puzzle pieces one by one to convince. But wait, how do you know that the Earth is round? Well, you've seen pictures from space. Of course, pictures, that's scientific evidence, that's scientific proof, isn't it? Lots of curves going on with those pictures. But you didn't take the pictures yourself. You haven't seen the earth with your own eyes. And even if you did, aren't we taught since elementary school that our senses deceive us, lie to us, misrepresent the world to us? Isn't that what makes science so powerful? Because it moves past, or at least complexity grinds through human weakness. Before you know it, it's gone nowhere. Things you thought you understood aren't making as strong a case as you hoped. They always have rebuttals. They're not playing the same game. You're trying to win at chess, but they're masters at go. Here's my advice, all right? So here's Forbes' advice, how to deal with those pesky flat earthers. Here's my advice as a scientist and a science communicator on how to handle a flat earther. Don't, don't handle them, all right? So here, here's the advice. Don't even engage with a flat earther. Don't talk to them, stay away from them. This is what we get from the mainstream media. This is what we get from the scientific community. Don't engage. All right, so let's let's go through the steps on, on how to not engage with a flat earther from Forbes magazine. Take a step back. Don't bother arguing. Don't lay down the evidence because the evidence doesn't mean anything if you don't have evidence-based mindset. Don't try to convince because you're probably gonna lose. First, use this as an opportunity why do you believe the earth is round? Because someone told you and you accepted it? Because you saw a picture once? Because you learned it in school? Self-reflection is always good. And opportunities like this should never be wasted. Examine your own beliefs and your own reasons for those beliefs. Take a moment to read up on it. Learn about horizons and shadows and eclipses and orbits and seasons and astronomy. Deepen your own knowledge, not to bring more ammo to a later fight, but for your own curiosity. So study those astronomy books, you know, get into all the mainstream narratives, you know, do a search and find out why Flat Earth is ridiculous, why it's been debunked so many times. And second, please remember that the person you're talking to, the person you're arguing with is a person, a human, probably a good person. Oh, well, that was nice of Forbes. You may think they're wrong about this and you have evidence to back it up, but empathize. They may have reasons for why they believe the things they do. Some of the reasons may be totally nonsensical. Some of those reasons you might agree with. Find some common ground. Have a dialogue, not an argument. All right, so now we're getting somewhere a little bit here. Create a moment where you can share what you've learned, not with the goal of convincing, but simply because sharing new knowledge is fun. If they end up swaying, hooray. If not, don't sweat it. There are other fish to fry in this world this round, round world. Well, first Forbes, let's get into your terminology. You gotta learn shapes, all right? We believe the earth is round as well. 
Round doesn't mean spherical. Round can be like a dinner plate or a pizza. This is what we see non-stop. It's unbelievable. I've been in this now for four years. Constantly, the mainstream narrative and the articles come out saying, round, round, round. We believe it's round. When are they going to get that through their head? I'm not sure, but we need to actually digest this. We need to dissect it and get into what they're trying to say here. But this is a very interesting article because it doesn't really say, you know, get into the proofs. It says, you know, don't really encounter it. Don't sweat it. You know, find out for your own curiosity. But again, we're seeing this time and time again with Flat Earth constantly. And if you don't think Flat Earth is getting bigger, all right, you're in for a world of surprise because it is absolutely magnifying at a rapid pace. When articles from Forbes magazine come out how to talk to a flat earther, all right, I'm going to be linking in the description below so you check that out. But honestly, how to talk to a flat earther, and this is the advice they get. This is what's so hilarious is that we are making massive ground. I mean, just what was it, a couple of days ago with uh, Stephen, uh, Steve, what was it, Steph Curry comes out, you know not believing in the moon landing. I think there were three other guys or two other guys in the NBA that were saying similar things. And I don't know if you guys watched, I have it on my channel, a couple uh, videos down on the recent videos you're gonna see, but they completely came against them, putting the fear of God into them. How dare you, how dare you question the moon landing? This is what we're dealing with. People that are so afraid to even just question the mainstream narrative. Listen, all right? 2019 is coming up here in about a couple of weeks and that will be pretty much the 50th anniversary. All right, they haven't been back. What's going on? You know, I think a lot of people are starting to question it and rightfully so. We need to question things like that NASA's telling us and they're saying, listen, we have the evidence, we can support it, yet we deleted all the telemetry data. All right, why would you delete, why would you get rid of the most important critical data of the biggest achievement of mankind's history? It doesn't add up. And a lot of people are asking questions. Do not be afraid to ask questions. And when an article comes out saying, hey, treat them like humans, again, it's nice, nice, appreciate it. You're not like saying come viciously at us. But really, don't really engage with the debate. You obviously are on the side of evidence. These guys are completely kooks. These guys are crazy. Really, we're so crazy. Bring your evidence, we'll bring our evidence. And let's just actually have that dialogue. Because a lot of times people are pointing to, just like this article did, pictures in space. Listen, pictures are not scientific proof of anything. So many people are bringing this up constantly. I'm getting so sick and tired of it. It's just so crazy. But I just had to bring this up. There's so much stuff that's going on in the news. I'll be doing a lot more live streaming in 2019. I'm just gearing up uh, with the new kind of studio set. And I hopefully will be able to do a lot more um, live streams, but also a lot of vlogging. And uh, let's take it to the next level, especially in 2019. So anyways, this was just a quick update. This is Forbes, Mag Forbes magazine. I'll link to it in the description. Check it out. Maybe send a letter to this uh, editor here, Paul Sutter, and uh, give him your thoughts on the article. Again, it wasn't horrible, but again, they're saying, listen, don't even engage with them. And really, anybody that would dare question the moon landing, question evolution, question the scientific narratives that we've been given from an early age, it's time to question. And we're moving to a pivotal point where people are starting to wake up to the true creator of creation, understanding that this lie has been put in place for a very specific reason. That's really what it's all about. It really comes down not so much about what's the true creation, who's the true creator. That's what matters. And again, that's what Celebrate Truth and I am all about, is exposing the world's lies, but also celebrating the truth. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Is he the truth or not? That's what you need to find out, because if he is, he's got a lot to say, because he even says that he is the creator of all creation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So again, we're seeing this constantly, and we have to go through it and uh, just continually to expose the world's lies. And uh, let's completely celebrate truth continually right into 2019. And honestly, if you engage with someone, be respectful, talk to them, go slow. The evidence-based thinking is where they're at. Give them the evidence, show them the proof because we've got a lot on our side. Truth sets us free and truth matters. Take care guys, blessings. We'll talk to you soon.